Bloomberg Audio Studios. Podcasts, radio, news. Joining us now, I'm thrilled to say, is one of the minds behind the offer. Sitting next to me is Gabrielle Kahana, Arc House CEO, managing partner, and co-founder. Gabrielle, great to have you in person. Let's talk about this raised offer, the bid going from $21 a share to $24 a share. Are you prepared to raise it again if Macy's rejects this? We certainly hope they don't reject it. And... You know, they said that they will carefully review this offer in that statement you just read. We sincerely hope that they really do carefully review it in good faith, um, as they should have almost, you know, I guess more than three months ago at this point, our initial offer. Um, and we, we also think that Macy's shareholders, you know, in that, in that statement, the, you know, Macy's executives are telling shareholders they don't need to do anything right now. Our view is that Macy's shareholders own this company Mm -hmm. and they should do something, which is reach out to their directors, reach out to their executives and urge them to engage sincerely and in good faith with our credible buyer group. And I want to bring you a line from the press release that you put out in relation to this offer. I thought this line was interesting. We may remain frustrated by the delay tactics adopted by Macy's board of directors and its continued refusal to engage with our credible buyer group. Have communications changed or opened up since this latest raised offer? Um, It's hard to say. There's certainly been dialogue and dialogue continues, but what we're asking for is that dialogue progress from communications and dialogue to action and to a a substantive conversation and engagement wherein we can contract and give shareholders a really significant premium in cash today. And uh, you're probably aware, but there's a train of thought out there that Arc House and your partners in this bid are chiefly invested in Macy's real estate portfolio. I know you've said publicly that's, that's not the case, but what do you make of Macy's plans to close 150 stores? I think it's a shame. Um, we are not focused on store closures and, in fact, hope that we get to close on the company before they close any stores. Our view is that the real estate is incredibly valuable, in large part because of its tenant, Macy's. And, I mean, hypothetically, should they actually go ahead and offload those 150 stores, close those 150 stores before you close on any bid? Would that lessen the appeal of Macy's for you? It's hard to say. Um, Without the diligence that we're requesting, we're sort of taking an outside view in. Um, So I, I can't speak to that. And let's say, hypothetically, that you do acquire Macy's before they were to shut those stores. In your plans that you've been thinking about for Macy's, is it possible that you could actually close more than 150 stores? Or what would you actually do with the real estate? That would be very surprising. For us, it's really much more of a, um, a capital markets rejiggering um, and a capitalizing on the awesome asset base that they have, as opposed to let's close stores and redevelop them into something else. Certainly, I'm sure it's the case that there is redevelopment opportunities in this portfolio, probably largely not through demolition and redevelopment, but uh, you know, in out parcels and malls and other um, interesting development opportunities that I'm sure will be availed to us um, when we get that diligence. But right now, we're not underwriting that at all. Our base case assumption is that all Macy's malls stay open, um, all Macy's locations stay open, and that we enhance the creditworthiness of the tenant inside the store. Mm. And I promise we're going to talk about something other than real estate in just a couple minutes. But I do have another question because your bid. I like real estate, so it's all good. <laughs> we all do. So your bid, this bid bid values Macy's at $8.7 billion, the entire company. And there's an interesting analysis out from Bloomberg Intelligence that estimates that the real estate alone is worth upwards of $8 billion. So from that perspective, $24 a share, it could be seen still as a lowball offer. Are you worried at other bidders coming in here to this process? I am. Um, I'm really hopeful and pretty optimistic that we've put together the right buyer group mm-hmm. to be incredibly competitive in any process that starts. And I have a high degree of confidence that we'll win. A high degree of confidence there. Let's talk about if you win, of course, you would take Macy's private. What can you accomplish by taking Macy's private versus keeping it as a public company? A lot. A lot. As a public company, it's hard to blame uh, existing management for focusing on the quarter because that's how they're judged. Mm -hmm. They're judged day to day, their share price changes, their cost of capital changes instantaneously. 
as a private company, you can focus on long-term prosperity, growth, and a stabilization of this business that's otherwise seemingly headed in a pretty scary direction. And what info do you still need from Macy's when it comes to your due diligence that you're doing on this company, that you're doing in potentially raising another bid if they do reject this one? What do you still need from Macy's? Um, really confirmatory diligence. It's not complicated, but it's a lot of work. Mm -hmm. And you've also, of course, as part of this, nominated nine people to Macy's board. How confident are you that you actually have the, the votes there to do that? So, you know, the nine... Uh, director nomination is really a function of the board size. They are 14 directors, so to ensure that we are speaking to shareholders directly, and really to ensure that shareholders can exercise their, um, their desires, their wants, and see to uh, an effectuated change, we need to nominate nine. So, yeah. And how is the communication with shareholders happening? Is that you reaching out proactively to shareholders? Are you seeing inbound requests? What's the mix there? I would say it's a combination. We've not formally um, uh, uh, submitted to pr any proxy materials. and We're not soliciting votes at this time. But we have received inbounds from shareholders you know, on an unsolicited basis and are very happy to speak with anyone. Um, we are a significant shareholder in this company and have very strong views about it. And let's talk a little bit more about financing here because that has been one of the questions. Of course, how would you pay for this? And uh, you all have also said that you've identified large global institutional financing sources that represent 100% of the capital required to buy the shares in Macy's that we do not already own. Can you give us some detail about who those large global institutional financing sources could be? Yeah, so they are, um, like you said, large global money center banks. Um, and the company shouldn't be surprised that there's so much interest uh, in participating in this capitalization. They have a really great asset base. And you know, hearing some of their responses that it's a tough capital markets environment, it's a tough financing environment, all of that's true. And notwithstanding that, there is robust interest in participating in this privatization. All right, Gabriel, it's going to be really interesting to watch this one play out. Hope to continue this conversation soon. That, of course, is Gabriel Kahana, the CEO of Arkhouse.